So let's do this categorization. Uh, to be honest, you know, a lot of candidates, they do struggle with this scenario. They're like, how can I do it in eight minutes? I'll tell you how to do it in eight minutes. First of all, uh, make sure you have all the things uh, uh, ready. This is a sterilized station. Uh, this is a station where you have to be very careful if you are uh, uh, maintaining the sterility of the station throughout. Yeah. So uh, unlike the blood sampling or cannulation where you need to gather the instrument, most of the time you will see all the instruments are there for you in front of you in catheter. In the hospitals as well, what happened is uh, we have got a kit. We have got a complete kit for the catheter. So what happened is when we go to the patient, we just open it and all the instrument in regards to the catheter, it's there. It's there with you. So you are not gathering the instruments mainly in catheter because it's already it's already there. Okay. Now we know that uh, whatever you're doing, you need to explain it to the patient as well. That I'm going to put a catheter. Catheter is a thin uh, plastic tube in your penis to your bladder, so we can drain the urine. And I can, for the purpose of examination, I would like you to undress below your waist. I have a sharp room to ensure your privacy. May I proceed? Yes. Uh, and at any point of time, if you feel uncomfortable, you want me to stop, let me know. Yeah. Now, when you're doing the Foley's catheter, there are some contraindications as well. So you have to be very careful. Any examination you're doing, you have to be very, 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 very careful with the contraindications part. What are the contraindications? If the patient has got recent instrumentation, that could be one. If there is a blood at the tip of the penis, because it could be a sign of uh, that your patient might have recent uh, pelvic trauma, for example. And that's the reason patient has got uh, there's blood at the tip of the meatus. So in this case, you may not be going for a Foley's catheter. So if patient has got scrotal hematoma, again, it is a sign of uh, pelvic trauma. So you may not be going for Foley's catheterization. In that case, you might be going for a suprapubic catheterization, right? So obviously, you don't have to do suprapubic catheterization, but when you are supposed to do Foley's catheterization, you always make sure you rule out the contraindications. Yeah. All right, so let's have a look at the scenario. The scenario is a uh, patient is George Jefferson. His age is, uh, let's make him 55. I came to you because of his complaining of pain in the lower abdomen, lower abdominal discomfort. No one has seen the patient. You are his first hope. Huh? Please talk to the patient, take a relevant history and assess the patient. Do emergency management and discuss the management with the patient. Do the relevant procedure if needed. All right, perfect. So when I'm going to go in, what I'm going to do, I'll take history first of all, obviously. I mean, I don't know what's happening there, so I'll go in. How can I help you? So this patient is holding the suprapubic area and saying, I've got severe pain, which is getting worse. Started one hour ago and it's just getting worse. How much it is? It is 9, 10 out of 10. It's very bad. And I am not able to pass urine for last 24 hours. So what do we understand with this much of information? Patient is holding the suprapubic area, saying I've got severe pain, it's getting worse, and now it's like 10 out of 10. And I'm not able to pass urine, right? Are you comfortable to talk? No, it's really painful. Is it going to be okay if I give painkiller? To be honest, it's not going to work. Because with this much of information, because all of a sudden this pain started, it's getting worse, pain is here, not able to pass urine. What comes in my mind? Urinary, urinary retention. So, if I try asking more questions, this patient may not answer. This patient is in severe pain. So, what you need to do, you need to manage. The thing is, if patient is in urinary retention, is it important for me to find out the cause first or should I relieve the retention first? Should I find out the cause first? Should I relieve the retention first? My thinking, my thinking would be, Let's relieve his retention first. He's in severe pain. What do you need to do? You need to relieve his pain. So what we will be doing, first of all, let's confirm if this patient has got urinary retention or not. How I can confirm? I've got one thing to do. I'll say, let me just have an examination. I'll do general physical examination, vitals. And the main thing that I need to do is I will do abdominal examination. Abdominal examination, when you mention, they might give you the finding. Examiner will tell you, doctor, your patient has got tenderness in the suprapubic area 
bladder is palpable and bladder is full. Okay, so what do you understand? You will tell the patient that what you have got is urinary retention. And what is the treatment for it? I'm going to put a Foley's catheter. So what you do, you will explain about Foley's catheter to this patient. That I'm going to put this uh, flexible tube through your penis to your bladder so that we can remove this, we can drain this urine, right? And... Uh, then uh, uh, for the purpose of examination, you need to undress below your waist and the sharp room to ensure privacy. Yeah, may I proceed? Just lie down on the, on, the, on the bed with your legs slightly apart, right? So in this, they might not let you do the abdominal examination. They might give you the findings. But then you will do the Foley's catheter procedure, right? Make sure you rule out the contraindication. Any recent trauma, any blood at the tip of the meatus, any scrotal hematoma, or any recent instrumentation. You can't afford to miss these points. If you miss it, you miss the station. Now, while you're doing the catheter, patient might ask you, why I'm having this problem? So why I'm having this urinary retention? I don't know the answer because I have to take more history. So you have got a couple of options here. You might start talking to this patient. But if you find it difficult to do multitasking, because the aim is do not make any mistake in the Foley's catheterization procedure. If you make a mistake, it's not going to work. So if you are not comfortable doing multitasking, simply tell this patient that let me relieve your pain first. Then we will have a conversation and I'll try to find out what could be the reason in your case, because there are many reasons behind. Okay, so once you're done with the procedure, then what you will do, you'll ask the patient about other things as well. If you have got any other symptom, for example. So sometimes you will see what is going to happen. This patient will give you lots of symptoms, but is positive for BPH, right? I'm going to the loo more often it's for a very long time. I have to wake up in the night as well. Sometimes I have to rush to the loo. Sometimes he says it takes time in the initiation of the urination as well. So lots of BPH thing he gave you positive. What else you can do? You can ask some UTI question. You can ask maybe a couple of cancer questions as well, right? And mostly they are giving this as negative. So this is positive. Now, why this patient is uh, uh, having this urinary retention, what it could be? It could be because of BPH. So what you're going to do now, after asking all these questions, what you will be doing, you will be doing examination, digital rectal examination. You just mentioned examiner might give you the finding that both the lobes of prostate are enlarged but smooth, right? That's it. So what you can explain, you can explain that it might be because of the enlarged prostate, right? Now what's going to happen, we will keep the patient for some time in the observation in the hospital because patient was not able to pass urine for last 24 hours and now I don't know how much urine he has passed. You might have to clamp the catheter as well because you don't want the patient to pass more than a liter or so. Patient might go in hypotension as well. All right, so I'll keep the patient in the observation for some time and then I can send this patient home with the catheter as well. I will tell the patient how to change the bag, right? I will call this patient in two weeks time in outpatient clinic. And what are you going to do there? You will simply do talk. This is trial without catheter and you will check how much is the residual volume of urine and you can do ultrasound scan as well and then only we will decide what can be the final treatment. Obviously, when we are sending the patient home with the catheter, you can give the medicines as well, uh, this uh, tamsulosin and finasteride. But then ultrasound and the residual volume and all, usually check after two weeks uh, when the symptoms have improved a bit, right? And we will tell the patient how to change the bags and all. Do we need to change the catheter in two weeks? Not really. So we are calling the patient again and then we will see what is supposed to be done. So this is what we have to do in this particular scenario. Now, you might say what you have explained, it's too much. I agree with you. Now, the thing is, don't force yourself to reach to this part of the station. You may not be able to reach. The diagnosis of this station is not enlarged prostate. The diagnosis of this station is 
urinary retention. And what is the treatment of urinary retention? You have to put a Foley's catheter. So when you're done with the catheter, you are done with the station actually. So if you're not able to uh, do the later part of it, like why the patient is having symptoms, if you're not able to mention about digital rectal examination, you're not able to mention about a talk trial without catheter, we'll call you two weeks time and all it is absolutely, absolutely okay because that's not the thing. It is too much to handle. But the main, what is the diagnosis of this station is urinary retention. And what's the treatment? You have to put a Foley's catheter. So if you're not able to reach to this end part of management, it's okay. What is the management? When you put a Foley's catheter, it is a management. So don't mess up the procedure, the catheterization. Otherwise, nothing is going to work. So... In the beginning, obviously, you have to be quick because patient is in severe pain. Just uh, say about abdominal examination. Uh, you got to know that patient has got full bladder and tendon esophagopubic area. You explain Foley's catheterization and you do the Foley's catheterization. You rule out the contraindication and spend time. Make sure no mistake in the procedure itself. The patient asks you why I'm having this problem. Then later on, you can ask questions as well. And if you're not able to reach the later part of the management, who cares? I have passed the station. So that should be your main aim, right? So that's how you're going to do this uh, Foley's catheterization. It is a sterile procedure and make sure we're not making, making any, any, any mistake in this. All right.